Hello everyone, this is the texture mapping tutorial and today I'm going to texture map the model I made previously in my first one but first I have to readjust the model a bit since she's not going to change clothes at all it's going to be just this one animation I actually have to give her hair and put the clothes make the clothes straight from the mesh itself so it's all based on one single mesh. So the head right now is actually part of that mesh. What I did was just take off that one layer and one ring there. Then from there I built it. Of course, had to uh, readjust a bit of the forehead. But after that, I simply um oh yes, and I also took out the ear. The ear was sticking out and since the ear was going to be covered, it was unnecessary. Here's a reference sheet that I made for myself and for you all there. There's the original design of my original character, Ethel May, and the one on the right is for the animation. I had to simplify it because my laptop just can't stand so much performance and energy that I'll be going into this. So for the clothes, I don't want to put in too many verses, so like sleeves right now yes. are actually made from just simply extruding that part there. Any of you know police and from there, you can tell that there's going to be a lot of Alani on the way. But I don't For care. The pants, I simply so uh, readjusted yes. some parts in yes. the near the lower what pelvis. Like, oh, for example, highlight. those bottom parts there, I just fattened them yes. and lowered them down, yeah. made it look like yes. actual pants. For the lower parts of her tunic, I simply got that ring, oh. ring there so and just that. extruded them downwards. And from there, I just formed as I went. You're going to do a lot of arranging, aligning, because sometimes those faces will like to just, well, what should I say? They don't want to overlap nicely on over the, the original model underneath. So there's a lot of pushing and pulling thing going on in my part, and maybe rearranging some of the vertices underneath. It's a bit... Um, tedious but in the end it's better to get it now and fix it rather than fix it later on. Beautiful. Now I'm going to assign ver vertex so groups. This is handy like when I need to um, assign certain so materials to a certain well, portion of the know, model I, I can always just go to the I vertex group and just this. click select. I'm what so you do happy. is select whatever vertices you want like for example I want only uh, the flesh. I'm gonna make a vertex group for the flesh. So I select those vertices there and just assign it. Thank you for bearing with and me. And you can tell, this. like, you will have this is what the vertex group looked like. Oh. I hope it's that's basically all my vertex you. groups. Um, let's see. Like now here, my... those little um, those edges that I selected, or vertices, the vertices that I selected. I'm making those my seams. Seams are the markers where when you're unwrapping your UV map, it will somehow unwrap itself along those seams. Granted, you'd have to do a certain command when you're in UV in editor to uh, wrap it along exactly as you want it according to those seams. It's tricky. Um, it's tricky, but... After a while, after experimenting, you'll get the hang of it. Materials are what you use to color your model. Now, they're going to work just like empty cups. They're going to start up empty until you give it one uh, material, the first material. It's going to get everything. Then when you select another portion, like hair, yeah, for instance, plan on example, you want a black, it's going to empty out those vertices like this cup. And fill it I with that, that color because you can't mix so. in two colors at the same time. No, oh, it'll turn gosh, gray. I'm so so happy. until you get Finally, like all your materials filled, right. I made one material that was including a uh, flesh, skin flesh, and her clothes. So everything else was opt. And this is where vertex groups come in real handy. They got the face, and now I just have to get the rest, like the back side of that head. Now you're gonna go pull up UV editor which is right there and then 
select the material that we had just selected, which is for the details, which we're going to texture map. Now, disregard that. It's going to show whatever mapping for the selected vertices. So go ahead and you want to press E and that'll unwrap it in a certain way. I think it unwraps according to the seams. And depending on what option you check on that left side there, it's going to show you different results, but I'm going to leave it as it is right now. With those vertices still selected there, yeah, keep those vertices on that left side selected, and you're just going to have to select each vertice to see which one corresponds to which, that way you can give yourself a good idea. It's tedious, but that's how long it took me. And then you'll have to rearrange those actual islands of vertices on the side of the user. And this is what you'll get. That's what I got. And when you're satisfied, you can export that UV layout, whatever's in that gray sc uh, square there. Referring to this again, I need, what is it, the tunic colored and just the eyes and the skin. Now, I used Photoshop to do the editing, and what I it was something funny. I don't know why, but, but anyway, when you export it, it's going to come up with one layer. Make another layer, put it underneath. And now I'm just making it easier so I can photo, I can fill bucket. And then I'm going to, well, basically, you just edit from there. That's all. Now, my plan is that I'm going to have some neck showing, so... I didn't fill everything, like you can see that part for the tunic, left it out. And then I'm going to go over and put some gold lining, or some yellow lining, whatever. And maybe just add in some impromptu designs. And here's the texture map. You can now save that as a JPEG or a PNG and export it. Now, here I opened the image on that UV emitter, so, editor. sorry, And then, um, as you can see, it comes out weird. Apparently that's because you put it, it's transparent, it's going to fill up colors. But I don't know why, but that's what got me pissed off. So I have to go back and re-edit it, and this time make another layer and fill bucket with the same flesh tone, which I found out by going to the, finding the hex code, I believe, of that flesh tone that I used in the materials. And you can view it by going to the texture mode rather than solid mode. Keep in mind it does this weird thing where whatever's supposed to be seen in the front you'll only be able to see from the view. That's okay, don't get freaked out. I was freaked out the first time, but that's normal, apparently. Now that you have materials, you then add a texture material. This is the way you can actually see the actual texture map itself. And you're going to set it to image or movie and in that tab labeled image you open the texture map that you had edited which you had used image mapping has to be set to clip so that way it will stay just once and it won't repeat I had a lot of problems wondering why everything wouldn't show every time I rendered the image to see that what it looked like it wouldn't show the texture and it would just show the flat out material colors so what I did was I decided to remake a new texture material. So I remade it there. And then the um, same things as I mentioned before. You make sure it's set to clip. The type is image or movie. Im open up the image. Image mapping is set to clip. And also just something that says wrapping. Just wrapping, that is set to UV. It's really a mystery because apparently I was wondering why won't it mix, and then I realized in the preview that the orb was not mixed in with the texture map. In fact, it just stayed flat. So I was pretty mad about it. If any of you know, please help me. And as you've noticed in this, you can see that the bit of the cheek sticks out there. So that means I have to go in and somehow um, push it in. But that's okay. It's just a minor adjustment. And from what we can see, it's a little tiny, but yay, hooray, it's gone now. Problem solved. And due to my paranoia, I'm going to be um, 
sculpting this thing from various angles to make sure it has actually worked successfully. Yeah. So here I've opened up a... I'm actually using three light sources. One of them is a hemi light and I think two of them are spotlights. That's how paranoid I am. I want to make sure the lighting's right so I can view from all angles and I'm practically um, using one camera and just moving it around. The front looks good so I just want to check out the back. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tu tutorial. Sorry if I'm stuttering and rambling, but that's just how I am when talking to an audience. And um, I guess I'll see you guys next time in the next tutorial, if need be, if I'm required. Goodbye.